Good evening, everybody. I formally open the 2020 Town of Deerfield meeting, a uh, town meeting, and call it to order. I've determined that a quorum is present, and I've examined the return of the warrant and find it in order. At this point, I'd ask you to all rise to, uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, we are I, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight we've all spent a lot of time away from each other and we hope the weather had been a little bit nicer but um, we're, we're fortunate to all be here uh, the goal is to move through things very quickly this evening but to give everyone a fair opportunity to speak and be heard um, I do want to thank all of the people that put this particular venue together uh, I think it came out spectacular and there's too many names to name but uh, thank you to everybody who's been involved so absolutely uh, just a couple of points we do all need to remain masked during the throughout the meeting unless there's a medical exception or need uh, we want everyone that's here to feel safe if at any point there's any concern over that please just raise your hand as a point of order and we'll address it immediately uh, when the meeting adjourns the there are two exits there's the exit by the porta potties in the back and this exit we're going to try to just let everybody space themselves out as best they can. Uh, if there's a need for something more formal, we'll get involved at that point. Um, according to our bylaws, in order to vote, you do need to be a registered voter. So I believe if you're not a registered voter, you should not be sitting uh, in this area. You would be sitting up at the bleachers. So are there any non-voters that are seated? Um, thank you. You're going to hear the terms articles and motions a lot. The, the articles are what were presented in the warrant. The motions are what actually will be voted on this evening. So it's important to listen as the motions are made uh, because that, that's what will be binding on everybody. If you do have an amendment that you wish to make to any motion, you will need to do that in writing and bring it to the center and we'll figure out a way to get it from there. So I do have paper and a pen if you don't have it and you do need to do that. Um, FCAT has put together, along with Matt Carlson, a, a tremendous process here tonight. So we're going to use something similar to what we use in the auditorium. There are uh, microphones that are at a social distance. So if you do wish to be spoke, uh, if you do wish to speak, just raise your hand. The co I'll recognize you. You'll state your name and your street, your town, uh, your street address, and then um, be recognized to speak. Uh, we're very fortunate this evening that State Representative Natalie Blaze is here tonight. Uh, she has been a tireless advocate for the COVID situation for our county. And in that uh, regard, I've asked her to speak very briefly on some of the resources that are available that you may not know about. So, Representative Blaze. Hi everyone, I'm State Representative Natalie Blay and it is so nice to see so many of your faces here tonight. I want to thank the select board members, Trevor, Carolyn and David for giving so much of yourselves to the town of Deerfield, particularly in recent weeks. And to Casey and Dan and everyone else who's put so much into tonight's outdoor annual town meeting, thank you. There's no doubt that these are difficult times and I'm here tonight to let you know that no matter how difficult things get, I'm still here working for you. So whether it's a question about the reopening plan for Massachusetts, how to get connected with food, housing, or the services that you need, if you're having difficulties with unemployment insurance or anything else, I want you to know that you can reach out to my office for assistance. You can certainly find me online or right across the river on North Main Street in Sunderland. But I wanted to give you my contact information tonight so that you can call or email me if you need anything at all. My email address is natalie.blay at mahouse.gov. Again, it's natalie.blay at mahouse.gov. The phone number for my office is 413-362-9454. And I do keep this phone with me at all times, recognizing 
that COVID-19 is not ending on weekends or evenings. I want to thank you for caring for one another in these difficult times and for being here tonight to show the Commonwealth the importance of town meetings and the lengths that we are going to to participate in democracy. Thank you. Before we start, we're going to do an introduction on the head table. My name is Dan Graves. I'm the town moderator. I'm going to do it for you. So we've got Lisa Mead, town attorney, Trevor McDaniel, selectman, Carolyn Shores Ness, selectman, David Wolfram, selectman. Casey Warren, town administrator, <laughs> Brenda Hill, town accountant, and Barb Hancock, uh, town clerk. So with that, I have two initial motions. I move that the reading of all articles be waived and that prior to the reading of a motion under the article, the moderator briefly summarize the content of the article to be waived and where the article is printed, can in the opinion of the moderator be incorporated by reference in any motion presented. Is there a second? This is just a, a procedural motion that allows us to waive the formal reading of the entire uh, warrant article. All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. I move that the following people be allowed to address the audience during the town meeting. Attorney Lisa Mead, Brenda Hill, town accountant, Casey Warren, town administrator, Darius Modesto, superintendent of schools, Tina, Tina Jemmy, principal, Deerfield Elementary School, Richard Martin, superintendent, Franklin County Tech School, Russell Cobris, business manager, Franklin County Tech School. Judith Rathbone and or Vera Mark, co-personal representatives of the estate of Charles Mark. Is there a second? Uh, Non-voters are not allowed to speak at town meetings, so this motion allows individuals that may have relevant information to share to speak. So all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Article 1, Mr. Wolfram. I move the town approve Article 1 as set forth in the warrant and further that the town set the maximum amount that may be spent on revolving funds in subsection G of Article 1 as follows. Um, so we're going to do something a little different tonight. Uh, several of the early articles that we'll call non-controversial in order to spend less time on them, we're going to pass them through this consent agenda. So this is a motion on Articles 1 through 6. Is there any discussion or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Article 2, Ms. Shores Ness. I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $8,518 to fund an unpaid bill for energy conservation work at the elementary school. Is there a second? second. Ms. Shores Ness, briefly. We had gotten a Green Communities um, grant for replacing the boilers at the elementary school, uh, about $130,000. And at the same time, we made some repairs that made sense to do at the time when the uh, repair people were there, but were not covered by the grant. And this is the bill that we need to pay. Any questions? I just am also going to note that typically we would turn to the Finance Committee on almost every vote and ask for um, their, their opinion on these votes. Their opinions have been printed in, in the handout that you have. So if the Finance Committee does have things to say, just please raise your hand. We're happy to hear from you. So, um, any, any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Article 3, Mr. McDaniel. Uh, let's see. I move uh, that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of 100000 to the reserve fund of the town in accordance with General Law Chapter 40, Section 6 for the fiscal year beginning uh, July 1, 2020. Is there a second? Mr. McDaniel, briefly. Thank you. So, 
this is a um, this is a reserve fund that we uh, put forward every year. It's a um, portion of money that we set aside. The finance co committee has uh, control over, and that if for any unforeseen things that come up emergency wise, um, the board can go to the finance committee and ask for a for a transfer to cover some emergency. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 4, Mr. Wolfram. Move that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $40,272 to the other post employment benefits, better known as OPED Liability Trust Fund, for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020. Mr. Wolfram, briefly. This is to cover the uh, shortfall in the retirement funds for the uh, the town has with our employees uh, and gradually build it up to uh, so that we can adequately fund uh, the retirement for our employees in the future. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. So that we can adequately fund uh, the retirement for our employees in the future. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Article 5, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of uh, $35,965 for the tuition and transportation expenses of students attending the Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School for the fiscal year beginning uh, July 1st, 2020. Daniel? So this is a, a we, uh, any, any person who is um, looking for an education in something that the Franklin County Tech School does not offer or um, our local school doesn't offer, um, they, it's an out of district payment we do every year. Some years we have students go there, others don't. I think this is uh, somebody in the criminal justice uh, program. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Article 6, Ms. Shores Ness. I move that the town adopt the classification compensation plan in accordance with Chapter 35, Personnel Article 3. Num chapter 35 to through 37 of the bylaws of the town of Deerfield for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020, as set forth in the warrant. Second. Ms. Shores, that's? This is our annual um, schedule that we pay our town employees. Uh, we were able to collect all our revenues this year as anticipated, and this is. Um, it does have a 1.5% increase in cost of living, and we will carefully watch the budget for this next coming year. Thank you. Any questions on that? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. The next article is the budget. So, Mr. McDaniel. to be appropriated under this article and unless objection is made each item recommended in the report of the finance committee shall be uh, tentatively accepted as appropriated for the purpose stated if an objection is made to any recommendation such appropriation shall be taken separately and the amount thereof and and the manner of taking shall uh, say of the Excuse me. In the manner of taking, the same shall be determined by vote of, of the meeting and tentatively accepted. One vote shall be taken appropriating each amount so accepted as a single appropriation not to be exceeded. Um, this is our standard process for the budget. So what's going to happen uh, is the budget line items are in the handout that you have, and hopefully you can keep up with it with the wind. Um, I'm going to read each item with a recommended figure. And if there's any figure that you want to come back to, if you have a question on, if you can just vocally state as loud as you can, hold, or, or put up your hand as well. Um, but really try to vocally, like, vocalize that hold because I'll be looking down at the chart. Uh, and then once we go through the whole list, we'll come back to the holds, discuss them one by one. So with that, here we go. 
Uh, the moderator, $400. Select board salaries, $16,000. Select board staff salaries, $219,410. Select board administrative, ad administrator expense, $11,150. Finance committee, $500. Accountant salary, $52,600. Accountant expense, 16525 Assessor salaries, $11,000. Assessor's administrative assistant, $64,105. Assessor's expense, $23,125. Assessor's uh, quinquennial recertification, $20,000. Clerk treasurer collector salaries, $183,125. Treasurer, collector expense, $37,110. Legal expense, $55,000. Personnel board, $500. IT hardware, $5,000. PEG access capital expense, $4,000. Contracted services, $214,654. There's a hold on uh, contracted services. Town clerk expense, $23,370. Conservation Commission, $800. Open Space Committee, $250. Planning Board, $7,000. Zoning Board of Appeals, $1,000. Agricultural Commission, $100. Energy Committee, $1,000. Town Office Building Maintenance, $80,400. Town Office Expense, $13,500. General Insurance, $55,000. Police payroll, $859,354. Police department expense, $110,300. Police department cruiser, $50,000. Inspections department payroll, $161,423. Inspections department expense, $4,750. Emergency management, $2,800. Canine control, $19,188. Deerfield Elementary School, $4,833,913. Frontier Regional School, $3,852,973. Frontier Regional Transportation, $115,036. Franklin Tech Assessment, $313,756. Franklin Tech Capital, $17,818. General Highway Payroll, $521,540. General Highway Expense, $253,350. Winter Snow and Ice Removal, $90,000. Street Lighting. Board of Health Salary, $38,021. Board of Health Expense, $33,025. Emergency COVID-19 expense, $8,500. Council on Aging, $500. Senior Center expense, $46,091. Veterans District Assessment, $11,593. Veterans Benefits, $21,000. ADA Coordinator, $500. Tilton Library, $188,309. Summer Swim Program, $1,310. Tri-Town Beach Expense, $6,514. Recreation Department Director Salary, $50,341. Historical Commission, $1,175. Veterans Day Memorial Day Expense, $2,000. Maturing Debt, $457,500. Interest on Maturing Debt, $131,032. Interest on Temporary Loans, $5,000. FERCOG core assessment, $44,013. Unfunded sick leave and vacation, $15,000. Franklin County, $531,139. $50,430. Unemployment insurance, $27,000. Group insurance, town, $309,266. Group insurance school, $644,390. Medicare insurance, $105,831. Uh, $105, we'll start with the one hold. I hold. Uh, I think there was a hold over here as well. Correct. Okay, we move.
Yes. We just need to wait to hear you. Hi, uh, Lily Dwight, 45 South Mill River Road. Uh, my question is pretty general. I see that um, the recommended was 229,654. But the request was 214-654, and you read the lower number. So I just want to understand what the difference is and why. Mr. McDaniel? Thank you. That's, um, we weren't sure which number was going to get read, so thank you uh, for that. So the difference is that, is that um, just in the last week or so, uh, we had the higher number budgeted, but uh, through Casey's uh, great work, we secured a grant for uh, about $17,000. We're going to do a compensation um, uh, study for, for, for the next year, hopefully for all the, you know, the, all the town employees and kind of make sure everybody's in the right, right spot and adjust where we need to, or at least get a study of what other similar towns are doing. And, uh, Casey was able to, to pull in a grant of, uh, $17,000. So that's, that's why we reduced that. So thank you, Casey, for saving us money. Um, so we reduced that. And I think the finance committee voted on that this evening as well. And we did early on, earlier on. Welcome, sir. Name is Kevin Pulaski, uh, 34, Captain Lathrop Drive. Um, under public safety, uh, police department cruiser. Uh, I believe it was three years ago that the chief of police stood before the town meeting saying he was never gonna have to come uh, before the town meeting requesting money uh, for a new cruiser because we were supposed to be having uh, that revenue from the marijuana dispensary. And obviously that hasn't <laughs> happened, so yep. I'm wondering why. Thank you. Uh, Natty Blay? No. <laughs> Chief, do you wish to address that? Or? There's no, no, there's no, there's been no, well, I could answer that real quickly. So there hasn't, um, we'd love to have some funds coming in for that, but um, for some reason Deerfield's been waiting and waiting and waiting for our two facilities to get licensed. Uh, they're close. Um, but it, it's a lot longer than we had hoped for. Any other questions on the budget? Okay. Mr. McDaniel? Um, so I move that the town appropriate, oh, I've got this right here, uh, move the town appropriate 15,336,405.50. Uh, to fund the accepted amounts voted and to meet this appropriation transfer zero from the overlay surplus uh, $62,530 from the uh, South County EMS Enterprise Fund uh, $5,649 from the South County Senior Center Fund $38,620 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund $6,881 motion so all those in favor as the budget as presented opposed with that the, the motion carries a second on mr. McDaniel's motion thank you mr. McDaniel just briefly again this this is to uh, to fund the town and and again the uh, the note that I had was the discussing that that uh, question that was asked earlier was the contracted services appropriation which was the difference in the amounts there um, yeah, happy to answer any other questions on it. Any questions? The mic coming behind you, sir. Yeah, uh, Reed Redmore, 36 Grave Street. I just wondered how much is going to depend on state money because uh, with the revenue shortfalls in the state, I wondered how that's going to affect our budget going forward. Thank you. 
Yeah, great, great question. Mr. McDaniel, just briefly. Sure. Um, so we have adjusted our, our revenue, uh, ex you know, expectations quite a bit. Um, I think we went 15% less on uh, unrestricted government aid and also some, some less on, um, you know, our, our local receipts, uh, re restaurants and, um, how, you know, housing. It, overnight room, room tax, that kind of thing. So we really um, brought our, our revenue expectations down to the, like, you know, the 200. We looked at what happened in, in 2008, 2009 recession and tried to bring that down. We, we've been talking with the state a lot, um, DLR, our, our representatives, trying to get a, a read on what's going to happen from the state. We're in really good shape right now. We do have, you know, quite a bit in reserve um, in, in stabilization accounts to, I think the 2020. Uh, two budget is going to be a lot harder than, than we're at right now. We, we've collected our revenues. We've done a very good job bringing our costs down and we pared back a lot of the expenses that we might, um, you know, that we might have gone forward ahead, ahead with if, if, you know, if it was a normal year. So I think we're, we're going to be in pretty good shape. But, but the, I, the plan is to look back at this in the fall. You know, every couple of months, just look at what, how the revenue is coming in as we're going forward. Really, uh, you know, appropriate the money, but be very careful on what we spend for the year. And uh, just we hope to have a fall town meeting to come back and just kind of see where we're at and and uh, readjust readjust there. But I think the real plan is to really put our eye to 2022 because that's really going to be where where it's going to be difficult for us. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Opposed. The motion carries. Article eight, Mr. Wolfram. I move that the town vote to appropriate $1,348,117 as presented in this handout to fund the Sewer Enterprise Fund for the fiscal year beginning in July 1, 2020. Mr. Wolfram, briefly. This is uh, basically the appropriation to cover the operations of the uh, of our sewer treatment plants. Uh, the funds come are a reflection of the uh, user fees returned retained earnings and investment in income and offset by the salaries and operating expenses, debt services, indirect costs, and operational uh, rev reserve. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 9, Ms. Shores Ness. I move that the town vote to appropriate the sum of one million four hundred and three thousand four hundred and thirty four dollars and transfer from free cash the sum of two hundred and ninety nine thousand six hundred and six dollars to fund the South County EMS Medical Service Enterprise Fund for fiscal year beginning July 1st 2020 and to meet the town of Deerfield's allocated share of the costs as set forth in the warrant. Five thousand in uh, receipts from insurance companies and coverage costs. Um, I think it's that it seems like we're going to be able to make it this year. There was a little bit of drop in the service in April, as people were hesitant to call the ambulance to go to the hospital. Apparently, because of COVID nineteen. So, um, I think we're on track. And I think we're going to be okay with the 525. So I think our share of $299,606 will cover the budget, EMS budget. But again, um, we will be looking at this in the fall and reevaluating. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 10, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town, in accordance uh, with the fourth paragraph of General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5B, will dedicate 75% of the receipts from the South County Emergency Medical Service rental payments to the SCEMS Stabilization Fund to be established under General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5B, to be effective for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020, and dedicate 25% of the receipts from the South County Emergency Medical Service rental payments to the general fund for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020. Thank you. Mr. McDaniel? 
So um, we're, we're planning forward, which we haven't done, you know, for a lot of things that we do in town. Um, we're, we're starting to move forward and set money aside. We have, we have rent coming in. We used to pay rent, you know, to the fire district and to Sunderland when the EMS was housed in different areas. Now that we have a new building, um, the rent that we pull in, we want to set aside for maintenance of that building. So a lot like the fire department, they, um, they set money aside and, and, and allow it to build up so that when they need a roof in the future, or and we don't have to come back to the taxpayers and ask for, you know, a whole appropriation and go back to the other two towns that can be, you know, we struggle with, with, with coming up with money for capital projects, you know, and that's seen by a lot of deferred maintenance at this building or all of our buildings all over town. So the idea was to take this amount of money that comes in, which is about $36,000 a year, and set money aside to maintain that building. And we decided to do that in a, in a capital stabilization account. So 75% uh, would be held to, to maintain and grow that money over time uh, so that we could address the large projects that were, what may need to happen you know, 10, 15 years down the road. And then 25% uh, of that money would be uh, put into the general fund and really that money then gets directed to maintain the building. So um, mowing the lawns, plowing the, plowing the snow, you know, any kind of maintenance around the building, that gets addressed yearly. Um, and, and, and so the idea is to look at that over a three year time span coming forward because it's a fairly new building and really kind of zero in on what those costs are. So maybe down the road we adjust that percentage, um, but we think right now 9,000 set aside a year will cover that. We look at the cost of maintaining um, you know, the, the firehouse, which is certainly bigger, but that, that's more than about, that's about $11,000 a year, a bit more than that. We think, you know, this nine is about right. We may have to adjust in the future. And it was, it was a kind of a nod to the other two towns and, and all of that we have done together to build, build this amazing service, um, that we would hold the money aside that they put forward and we put forward every year to make sure that we have money going forward to maintain that building. We'd love to do it with everything, but. Any questions? Yes, sir. Hi. My name is Kip Camosa. I'm 304 Greenfield Road. Uh, a couple of years ago, as one of your selectmen, I represented the town in negotiating with the other communities about the rent. Since this building cost the town of Deerfield nothing, we negotiated a rent of $3,000 a month. And we also agreed that all of the money was going to be put into a fund to maintain the building, as Trevor yep. outlined. I have a concern that it's called the SCEM Stabilization Fund because it's not to stabilize any of the monies to be appropriated to the SCEMs. It's only to maintain that building. Correct. Another, well, I think it's the wording of that should be changed from Stabilization Fund from SCEMs to the building. The secondly, which I think is very important, we also agreed that all of that money was going to go into the to maintain the building for the future. Some of the other communities were concerned that Deerfield was going to take that money and put it in their general fund. And we promised that would not happen. And that's what you're suggesting tonight. So I would say that all of that money, as we promised, should go into the fund to maintain the building going forward. Mr. McDaniel, briefly. So uh, the reasons, you know, that, that was our intention too, as I was on the SCEMS board when we came up with this. But as we started, and there was a, a, a question whether we put it into a, a revolving fund or a stabilization account. And as we got to, uh, got to kind of putting this together, talking with our, uh, with our auditor, we couldn't allow that kind of money to build up over the years in a revolving fund. And we felt, um, and, and to be able to, if we had to do an addition down the road or something like that, it was safer with a two-thirds vote in a stabilization account. And the reason for the 75-25 split is that, you know, who, we have to maintain the building and we should, we should have money set aside to do that. So we still have to, we still have to mow the lawn, plow the fields, all, I mean, plow the uh, driveway, any other maintenance on that building. So this is a revenue that's coming in that we pay you know, 50, more than 50% for, um, we should have that money set aside to address each year. All three maintain that building. So that's kind of maintaining that building. We're pulling that money specifically from the three towns. So 100% of that money goes towards that building and the maintenance of that building. We're not pulling it off to any other 
needs uh, or any other issues in town because we agree wholeheartedly that, that all of that money should be used for that building, the maintenance of it and the long-term maintenance. Trevor, maybe you should say, Mr. Camosa. Response to that is that we agreed that all of this money would go to the fund. The other communities were quite adamant that it not go into our general fund. And I do understand what you're saying about maintenance. That's what the money is for. Right. But the little bit of snow plowing that goes on there doesn't cost the community that much. And the lawn mowing doesn't cost the community much. It's, there's very little grass there at all. And that, I don't believe so, but I would like to know how much the, fire, the highway department charges the fire department for plowing through there. I don't believe they do. They, so they, there's less snow plowing there. And I just, I feel bad that we're going back, Deerfield's going back on their word to our neighbors saying that all of the money was going to be saved for that, not going into our general fund. And I also know that the town, Deerfield, pays 50% of the funds for the SCEMS too. And that we charge the other communities, the Skims Association, uh, a general admin, admin fee that I believe is fifty or sixty thousand dollars, anyways. For that, so we really get paid well for overseeing all of that. Mr. McDaniel, just briefly, I'll, please. I'll do this briefly. So, um, from what I understand, you would like to change it from SCEM stabilization to SCEM's building stabilization, which I'm fine if somebody wants to do an amendment on that. Um, I, I just feel like we we should. Um, you know, pay for the building out of the revenues that we get from all three towns to maintain that building. And, you know, uh, I don't, 100% uh, of that money is going to this fund. Uh, it's just broken out so that we can account for the maintenance of that during the year and not, um, not just suck it up all of ourselves. We should, we should pay for it equally. Um, Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Opposed? The motion carries by a two-thirds vote. Article 11, Mr. Wolfram. I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $96,300 and transfer from the roadside mower special uh, revenue fund the sum of $26,000 for a total sum of $122,300 to fund the capital improvement projects plan for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020, as referred to in this handout. Second. Mr. Wolfram. Uh, this is a collaborative effort between the different departments within town to use a little bit of our free cash and take some of the funds that we were setting aside to finance the capital that we absolutely need right now and try to address uh, possibly further capital needs in the in the fall if uh, our free cash comes back where we hope it would. Thank you. Does the Finance Committee have anything to add? Very briefly, we didn't object to any of these. Does this work? Yes. We didn't object to any of these. What we thought made sense was that those that aren't needed immediately, we can hold off until the future in October and November, and that the town come design an improvement, we can spend that, we can vote that in October if we have the money. That's the only difference. Thank you. Scarborough Highway. I just want to make it clear that the $26,000 for the roadside mower is not coming from taxpayer money. That $26,000 comes from Eversource. It is a program that we were the last people in the basically Massachusetts to get where we get the mower. They make five payments of $26,000. At the end of the fifth year, the mower is ours for a zero buyout. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 12, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of uh, $23,959 to fund its share of the Frontier Regional School capital request as presented in the warrant. Briefly? 
So this is just, um, you know, we, we had done a, a quite a few uh, a capital plan to look at all the expenses that we're going to need here. We're, we voted last year for the, for the track and some other things. These are, these are some issues that are really safety issues that we feel should go forward to make sure that, you know, we have good working intercom here and it's our portion that we, we felt, you know, the problem is we keep putting expenses off, capital expenses off, and we feel like we should just move forward with these. It's my understanding the Finance Committee did not recommend this, is that correct? This was an article that we looked at quite some time ago, and uh, because of the problems we had with the uh, virus, uh, we didn't meet too often in the past three months. So this one got skipped, and uh, you know, I suspect if we took a good look at it again, we may change our mind on uh, funding it. But you know, I don't know that I had a particular objection at this point to it. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Article 13 is the Community Preservation Fund. Ms. Shores Ness. I move that the town act on the recommendations of the Community Preservation Committee for the Community Preservation Fund budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020, with each item to be considered as a separate appropriation as presented in this handout. Uh, briefly on the point of the motion. Um, the, this was um, applications made to the Community Preservation Fund, and in trying to speed up the presentation, we're going to read them together. Okay. If you can read, um, I believe we're actually going to read them separately. <laughs> I, I meant I was going to yeah. read them instead of having Tim yeah. up here to read them. Okay. Uh, Sorry. No, that's fine. So the first one, please. Appropriate $2,854 from the Community Preservation Fund for the 2021 estimated revenues for Dead of 1704 Monument Restoration in the Albany Road Cemetery in a matter consistent with the proposal submitted by the Deerfield Historical Commission and approved by the Community Preservation Committee said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board and and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Is there a second? Ms. Schwarzenegger, do you wish to be heard on these? or I I'm, I'm in favor of all of these. I don't okay. know um, if anyone wants to speak to them. Does anyone have any questions on this or wish to be heard? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Appropriate $47,000 from the Community Preservation Fund of 2021 estimated revenues for the Laurel Hill Cemetery Historic Gravesite Restoration in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the Old Deerfield Cemetery Association and approved by the Community Preservation Committee, said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Second. Any questions on this? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Shores Ness? Appropriate C. Report, appropriate 272000 to acquire for recreational purposes 8.5 plus or minus acres of open land identified map 151, lot 1, in the records of the assessors, a plan being on file with town clerk, said land to be developed into recreation fields, foot and bicycle paths with parking, an acquisition of 7.45 plus or minus acres of open land identified as map 158, lot 23, in the records of the assessors on which to place a band shell with seating for open air events for an additional $878,000. To meet this appropriation, I move that the town appropriate 
$198,870 from the Community Preservation Fund Open Space Reserves, $900,000 from the Community Preservation Fund Undesignated Fund Balance, and lastly, $51,130 from, from the Community Preservation Fund 2021 Estimated Revenues, and to authorize the Select Board to submit on the behalf of the town any and all applications de deemed necessary for grants and or reimbursements from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I move that this will all be done in a manner consistent with the proposal approved by the Community Preservation Committee, said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board and any unused funds to return to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Um, before any discussion, I do. I just want to state that I have assisted the family that owns this parcel with the probate of their father's estate. Uh, I've spoken to both sides. There's no conflict as I'm simply moderating the debate tonight, but I do want to disclose that. Is there anyone that would like to make any comment? Ms. Rathbone. I'm Judith. Can everyone hear me? Okay. So the parcel is right there. That's behind my uh, family home, which we bought when I was 17. That's not That's the not property. property. That's not the property. So she's not talking about the right property. The 7.5 acres are my father's house and land. Is there a question about that? Uh, there may be. One moment. Was there a question? My father lives at 131, lived at 131 North Main Street. The property behind us was purchased by him 15. He wanted to enjoy his childhood and his youth and his young adulthood in Central Europe. He was forced to become a refugee. He was forced to leave his homeland. He was forced out of his own country by fascism and by communism. And he came here with the hope and the expectation that he would live a free life. He did. And when he bought that land behind the house, that's what freedom meant to him. That he could recreate a forest because he was a hunter, because he loved nature, because he loved animals, because he loved birds, because he loved trees, and that's why he wanted it left the way it was. He knew the school district wanted it. They came to him over and over. We talked about it at the family dinner table. He said, no, I don't want them to develop it. I want it left the way it is. I am sympathetic, I, Judith, inheriting this house with my sister. I will plan to live there. I am sympathetic to the need for a soccer field. No, I do not want a town band shell in my backyard. I do not want roads built next to my house, between my house and Gail Dupuy. I do not want a road built behind my house and, and Patty and Dan Talega's house. I want the peace and quiet, the beauty of nature that that forest represents. Okay. Okay. I ask you, please do not support either the budget distribution or the taking of my father's land through eminent domain. He just died. We have not even had time to mourn his death. I found out about this on Friday. 
My father kept every piece of paper, every piece of mail he ever got. He had no notices of any conservation or finance committee meetings over the past year that people were thinking of taking his property through eminent domain. If he had known, he would have been there to talk to everyone and say the kinds of things I'm saying now about what the land meant to him. I am there every day. The phone number is in the phone book. Call me any time to talk about any of these issues and to ask me any questions you have. Whatever happened in the final days of my father's life, many people in this town know that my father was not himself. Many people. And to be relying on a supposed pledge that he made, I'm sorry, the family doesn't agree. So I just ask you, please, this is a place where private property should mean something. I support the idea of finding a solution for the athletic fields. I have not seen a lot of people manding, needing, asking for a town meeting place away from the center of town. Let's use the Cumberland Farms property and make something in the center. I'll help make that happen. But please don't vote to destroy my father's property. I'm sorry. This is, I should be calmer. I should be more rational. I would like to speak on Article 17 as well as 13. Please come to me with any questions after. If we defeat this tonight, great. I'm sure it will come up again as an issue of discussion. Most of the people I have talked to never heard of it. So let's keep talking about it. I'm open to talking with anyone about it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any other comments? Yes. Uh, just wait on the mic. Again, your name and your street address. My name is Gail Dupree, and I'm right next to Judith. And I totally support her in this. I believe her father absolutely did not want to get rid of that property. You've got tons of wildlife back there. I would end up with a parking lot directly behind my house where we sit and enjoy and eat. And we bought this house two and a half years ago because there was this nice big open field behind us and it was nice and peaceful and quiet. anything back that marsh you've also got <clears throat> the noise it, it'll just be you know how late is this stuff going to go on all these activities and my property value is it going to go down I don't think I would want to buy a house that's right smack up against all of this stuff also looks like some of the trees would be cut down. I, I love all the trees around. You know, it gives property. Is there going to be a big fence for privacy put up? Um, just because eminent domain is legal, I don't think it makes it right at all. Um, I ask everyone to vote against this because it would absolutely probably make me I love Deerfield and I love being here, but it probably would have affected my decision to move if I knew all this was going to be right behind my property. Um, thank you. Uh, we'll just stick right here. Next, man. Yes. Yeah, I'm uh, Frank Schwerin, 54 Sawmill Plain Road. Uh, we've only lived here five years, but I don't have any idea how to vote on this. So far, I haven't really heard anybody say anything in favor of it. Could we have some more explanation? I'd like to do what's right, but I have no idea what the hell is right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chief, uh, the head of the CPA said that you would be the proponent on this particular article, so you can take 
the mic from FCAT. Sir? Can we, oh, can we just get a mic up here? Sorry. Two, three, four, five. Thanks. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. My name is John Pachork. Most know me as the police chief in Deerfield. I'm also a resident of 141 Waitley Road. I was born and raised in Deerfield. I was born here in 1975. When I grew up in Deerfield, we did have a town park. The town park is where the elementary school now resides. It was taken out in 1992 when we built the elementary school. So when I came back as chief of police in 2012, I was kind of surprised that the town had never really spearheaded moving a town park and finding a new home for it. We had um, an area over there where we could have concerts. The fire department often uh, did an outdoor freeze for us where we had an ice skating rink. We did all kinds of activities there, including July 4th. And many that have been around for 20, 30, 40 years. Remember, we did fireworks off of Mount Sugarloaf. So in the past eight years as the chief, I've been peeking around for areas in the town that we actually could make a town park again to bring people together. And I understand that five or ten residents on North Main Street are going to be unhappy. They're going to be unhappy with the town. They're going to be unhappy with me. There's only so many options that we possibly can propose in the town to accomplish this goal. So when we look for town parks and we look for athletic fields and we look to bring people together, we look for an area that is on a transit route, that has sidewalks, that's close to schools, and really can bring that core community together. Concerts on the common, we know they're unsafe. We know there's limited areas. There's not much we can do. So I, I have been peeking around for a long time, and I've looked at many different areas. I've been in consultation with the select board over and over again, and literally until now, we just haven't been able to identify anything. And we looked at the property just south of Pelican, and Joyce Prevere wanted $350,000 for it. It's eight and a half acres, it's just north of the trees behind you. I mean, you can look, uh, page three of your handout has the map on it. You can see all the parcel layout. We had an independent appraiser walk in there and evaluate the property in fair market value. The fair market value for that property came back at 272000 So we decided that with the current estimated value in the Community Preservation Fund of near $3.5 million dollars that this would be a valid project to undertake for the town so the select board entertained a purchase and sale agreement at which point once we finally hit that point i was looking at mr mark's property and i actually thought the exact same thing as judith did his daughter that there was no way in god's name he would ever sell to the town he'd throw me out of his house so March 26th, I went over and met with, uh, with Mr. Mark. I got yelled at for about 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, you know, Charles is very, was a very steadfast person. Um, and we, uh, we had a, a relationship that could go back and forth on any given day. And I was actually shocked when I told him the possibility that we'd name the Banshell after his family for his family legacy that I finally saw movement in him. And he then asked me how many acres we needed to accomplish this goal. And I walked him through the handout that you have in front of you and said to put the band shell in, I need roughly two acres. And then I said, if we go additionally with the soccer field, and he cut me off and started yelling at me, you only need two acres. And I said, yeah, but the soccer field, and, and those that knew Charles, he cut me off again and said, no, 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 no. You didn't tell me four acres. You told me two acres. I said, so we'd start with two acres. And it was a very productive meeting. Um, I was actually shocked leaving there, so much so that I, I advised the community um, improvement planning committee that night that I was actually shocked that 
he had agreed to part with two acres to allow for the band shell to go in there and that it couldn't be labeled just the Mark band shell. However, it had to be labeled the Charles Mark band shell. Because those of you know that knew Charles Marks that I did and his daughters do, he gave money to Frontier. He believed in recreation. He believed strongly in education, very strongly. So I was utterly shocked. And then I was shocked again because on April 10th, I got a phone call in my office two weeks later after I originally met with him that he was on hospice. And I went, are you kidding me? And he passed away the following Monday. I'm sure all the neighbors were heartbroken. I was heartbroken, even though he screamed at me every time we interacted. That was just his demeanor. I ultimately look at this project, and when I take a step back and I take the emotions out of it, this is an amazing project for the town as a whole. When we look at 5,125 as our populace from 2010 census, this is a project that the common we don't have trailer trucks driving by the downtown center. We currently bus kids out of town to athletic fields. And at the end of those events, those kids are left by faculty, and there's no way to run back to a locker room. There's no way to walk over to additional athletic events at Frontier or Deerfield Elementary and participate in other events. So busing costs, ultimately, if we did additional athletic fields here, would save about $15,000 annually. Concert on the Common, if you go through the brochure I've addressed, so the goal ultimately is to create exercise for all age groups, community events, concerts, athletic fields. It'll be accessible by wheelchair, bicycle, walking, bus route, vehicle from the high school and elementary school. The property for Prevere's property was valued at 272,000. The property behind us, the Charles Marks property when we brought an appraiser in was valued at 36,000 because technically it has no frontage, so it's a non-buildable lot. So that valuation is much lower. So the total acquisition of land itself is about $308,000. There is currently uh, a park and recreation grant that's eligible. It's due in Boston every July 15th. Deerfield at face value is eligible for $100,000 unless we can prove that we're on a bus route or that there's parking for more than 100 cars. Well, North Main Street is a bus route, and between Frontier Parking and the new park, there's more than 100 cars that would be available. I covered the Community Preservation Fund is just below $3.5 million. The current cost to the taxpayers to explore this, to bring in a wetlands engineer that's already been in there, land surveyor, and appraisal fees was about $15,000, really, to bring it up through exploration. The project has been approved and endorsed through various town committees, the select board, the finance committee, the capital improvement planning committee, the planning board, and the community preservation committee. Every one of those committees has approved both parcels and endorsed the project. Through a partnership with Frontier Regional High School, they are entertaining the concept of maintaining the property for us as it would be utilized by their student athletes, school music programs, and educational programs to go over and research the wetlands and other areas. Chief, we've got we to kind of wrap up. So the total community preservation fund is $1.15 million. With the park grant of 400000 the total project would be about $1.55 million. And I think this would bring the community back in Deerfield. So I certainly would appreciate your support. Thank you. Uh, if we can, uh, question in the back was, uh, 
has had her hand up for a while. Yes. In the, in the red. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh, well, let me just ask a question before my husband. So I, uh, I'm very confused. Did Mr. Charles Mark sign a purchase and sales agreement before he passed? It was all verbal. Okay. So the family doesn't wish. It's a great plan, Chief. It's great. But the family does not wish to sell the land. So why are we discussing this? Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hi, uh, John Waite, 15 Keats Road, and I'm the chair of the planning board. So I request that the planning board did not endorse this project. And I do have a question about, as, as my wife and I just discussed, if they want to sell the land, that's one thing. I don't see the town taking it by eminent domain. And that's in this motion. So I certainly don't, wouldn't want to see that the town take it by eminent domain at all. Thank you, sir. Any other comments or questions? Yes. Hi, my name is Kathy Wetroba from 18 Third Street. And um, I think that if we're having a discussion about the acquisition by eminent domain for anything, we're really going down the wrong road. I don't think that's being a very good steward of our community. Um, I think that I understand what it feels like to have something built in your backyard that you aren't in favor of. I have a town garage in my backyard. But it serves a very different purpose for the town, uh, and it's necessary, and it's in operation regularly. We have schools. There was a time when the school was that community center. And we have Frontier, and we have Deerfield Elementary, and we have behind the police station. And I think we have a lot of area that we could use as entertainment space. I, I just don't think we need to go and take down an ecosystem that already exists and has existed for a long time. I, I think we need to take some strong consideration. I'm opposed to this, and um, I hope others will voice their concern. Thank you. If we can go here and then to the back. Is this a piece of property that we um, voted a couple years ago about allowing access to the back so it could be sold by the family? Can someone answer that, Mr. McDaniel? You're shaking your head. I don't believe so. I, okay. I'm not sure, though. Yeah, I, j I just remember a vote. Um, if we yes, can. this if is the property that we changed. And I, if I remember correctly, it was at the request of the family. I could be wrong, but it, we changed the zoning in that area. That's just one consideration to discuss. The other thing is we live over on North Hillside Road, and 23 years ago they were talking about putting gas tanks there. Um, if it is an available piece of property um, to the public, uh, something very well could go there. Um, we were threatened to take it by eminent domain, um, and I would have rejoiced at having recreational um, stuff behind me, so that's another thing to consider. Um, and the... Mr. Marks, I knew, I do think, would really be honored to have something with his name on it. Um, he did really care about his place in the world being recognized. Um, so these are just things to throw out. It's not really an opinion one way or another. Thank you. In the back. Hi, Patricia Ann Pirog from 127 North Main Street. Uh, on the other side of the field right here is where we actually live. We didn't find out about this until Friday, and it directly affects us. There was no notification to any of the abutters in the area about any of this, so we did not get any opportunities to speak to it. And I can tell you, we object drastically. I don't want this going on behind us. None of the neighbors in the area do. We are there for quiet. We have our kids, we have our animals, and all this traffic will destroy that. There's one thing, though, that I don't think a lot of people know is that there's an area of land on Braeburn Lane that was gifted to this town for recreation use. Have we looked at that instead of taking somebody else's property? Do we have an answer to that? Uh, I, I think to the select board at this
housing and creation. We would love to do that. There's, uh, we've been notified it's too small of, a, of an area to get uh, rescue vehicles in. So fire trucks, um, ambulance, all that kind of stuff is just too tight to get in there. We, you know, we would even, you know, love to take a house down and, and get in there, but we just don't have any access. The problem is there's just no access to anywhere around, and this being so close to the frontier can be used by all the children. Um, we just felt, yes, it's going to be upsetting to some. I, I get that. We would love to purchase the property and would pay fair, fair market for it. It's landlocked right now. We just think that it, um, you know, it, 50 years from now, and we look back at what we've given our children and the, and the future families of a place to uh, have a park and to gather, um, walking paths, uh, athletic fields. You know, we're trucking kids over to Sundown or Waitley and, you know, parents have to go pick them up. There's no way to, you know, have them walk back to the library after school or, like you said, go, go change in the locker room. It's just we're, we're too spread out. There is nowhere else. If, the, if there's another piece of property that we could, we could use that was right next to our schools and could be used by all the community, um, we, would, we would jump at it. Spirak, did that answer your question? Or? There's about Brayburn, but there is a lot of other areas in town that we could look at versus taking something by eminent domain. There is other areas. There is other land for sale that people want to sell. There are people talking about other areas that they would like to see this. This is an area where people don't want it, and you're trying to take from a family without their permission. Thank you. Um, just where the mics are, if we can just get the question right next in the back, and then we'll come to you in the front, sir. I'm Amanda Butler. Uh, I'm over on Hillside. Actually going to be moving right over to this property here on North Main. You mentioned that you want to leave a legacy for our children. Now, I have three young children. I've been here for a number of years. How about we leave a legacy for them that we don't try to steal people's property without <laughs> their permission? I think that would be a really good lesson to teach our kids. Thank you, ma'am. In the front, right here. Josh Schimmel, River Road. Um, just in the interest of transparency, uh, nothing on this sheet talks about eminent domain, and I think it would be appropriate for that to be in the write-up. I know it's in the motion, but it's not in the propaganda. Um, if we can grab a couple of questions over here. Good evening, Matt Russo, 28 Captain Lathrop Drive. By the railroad tracks, there's a piece of property over there for sale. The old Channing, Channing property. Mr. Russo, can, you might just have to come forward a little. The property happens to be for sale. That building that sits on the property would probably serve multiple purposes for this town, such as town offices, senior center, potentially library space, multiple uses. There's quite a bit of acreage over there. There's an established parking lot. There's an established right away already into the property. There are walking trails with exercise equipment on those trails. It's all done. Yes, we'd have to buy it. It's advertised at just under $5 million, which sounds like a lot. But when we consider what it's going to cost to build the new library we've been talking about and do something with the senior center that we've been talking about, and potentially do something with town offices down the line, that might be a bargain, may take care of a, quite a few needs, and we wouldn't have to take anything from anybody. And I'm, I don't know, I haven't spoken with the family, but the Beat family may be willing to do something on the price for the town of Deerfield. My personal fear, I've heard that the Chinese Immersion School was interested in it. The last thing we need in this town is another piece of property off the tax rolls to another educational institution. So if we're going to take it off the tax rolls, we might as well do it for our own benefit. I would plead with our select board and our leadership to take a look at that as an option. And I'm willing at the end of the meeting to vote instructions to the select board to set up a committee to explore those options. Thank you, Mr. Russo. I, I think it's just important that if 
we understand we're not going to try to identify other parcels tonight. If it, the fact that there are other parcels certainly is something that we should deliberate on. But beyond that, we just want to stay on the scope of the motion. We are trying to keep things moving, um, but we do want to give everyone a fair shot. There was a question here. Really doesn't. Mr. McDaniel, can you? I'm sorry, sir. Go yes, uh, yes, there is access to there. Um, the, we understand that there was some interest in a uh, rock, uh, uh, rock crushing and concrete crushing uh, factory that wanted to go in. Um, we're we're pretty, oh. you know, we wanted to kind of steer clear of that. And uh, but there yes, is a, there is the, access. So there was a history of potentially that being an industrial developed property. And that could still happen with the layout the way it's designated here on the plan. If we don't purchase the property, yes, uh, a factory could come in and, and, and put property right there and, and, and put in a factory, yes, of, of any kind, industrial. Any other comments or questions? Ms. Mark, we'll go to you next, just one in the back, please. Hi, uh, William Jura, 9 Conway Street, um, uh, raising two boys, young boys in this town. And we walk, um, every day we walk five miles around town. And, and we, we love the fact that there's land in Deerfield. That's why we came to Deerfield. And the fact that one of our neighbors might lose their own land for the sake of all of us, I don't think that's necessary in a town like, like Deerfield. I think that there's plenty of space for us to explore perhaps some more creative solutions for uh, for for this uh, recreational purpose. Uh, and furthermore, I think that when we look at this plan in and of itself, there's just a lot of questions. I think we haven't heard about the $400,000 grant. Has that been secured? Chief? That's due in Boston by July 15th, so we would have to apply for it. Thank you. And... You know, and I, and I think that we might also want to look at bringing in a planning consultant. And I think because of the, the blessing that we have for all of this space in this town, why not look comprehensively at some creative solutions for uh, solving all of the residents in this town before we just knock down a bunch of our neighbor's trees and, and move on from there. So uh, at this point, I'm against the plan, and, and I hope that maybe we could think diligently before we move to an eminent domain option. And just one more point, a few of us uh, in the front have recommend, or have already stated that it's a landlocked parcel. At the moment, it's not. It's owned by a private resident, and it's not landlocked at this point. So I think that our language here is very important. Thank you. Um, go ahead. Hi, Lily Dwight, 45 South Mill River Road. I am on the Community Preservation Committee and was one of those who supported this. I would like to point out a couple of things. One, this motion is the appropriation, has nothing to do If you like your buy it. And it's sad but true. But anyway, my main point is that 
This is the conversation about the appropriation. The Community Preservation Committee strongly approved of this. Uh, there was no talk of eminent domain, I will say, at that point. So I completely understand not liking that. But the idea that we can spend the money that we have been setting aside for our community on something other than cemeteries, on something that builds our community, that brings that creates a place where we can all come together. And that is what we approved strongly. And really, um, the amount of energy that's been put into by everybody trying to see this go forward. And at the time, it was with the understanding, the blessing of the gentleman in question. Thank you. Collins, I think the, the family would, Mr. Collins, the family would like to speak Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me through my mask? Thank you. So I'm the older daughter, um, and it's a funny situation to be here uh, because I stepped into our dad's house uh, for the first time tonight. It was just too sad for me to go back there. Um, I was with him on the Friday the 10th. I did hear about this proposal, and I just want to um, present my perspective on the chief's uh, version of my dad shouting. Dad was 97 years old, and he was one of those aging parents who did not want to admit he was hard of hearing. So he had a tough time accepting using hearing aids. Um, and all I just wanted to say was that uh, he was very clear to us, to me, For a while, she was up in Greenfield with the Shine program. She had a deep commitment to community service, deep, deep. So I think that there's important considerations here uh, about recreation, about bringing a community together, but I really applaud all the different options that have been raised so far creatively. I applaud this context to be able to raise these issues like this. And um, I have to say that it really came as a surprise. I only saw the band show, okay, on April 10th. None of it made sense to me, knowing my dad. And it turned out that 10, year, 10 days later, uh, barely, he had passed. So I don't know, I'm, I'm not super comfortable with the, with the timing on this. And I have to say also that if we, the children, and Chief knew us both, he had our address, I made it clear to him that if there was ever any issue, he was to contact me. I am up in Shelburne, of course, Judith was the same. So it just comes a little strangely, if you will, to, um, to hear about this uh, so very quickly. So um, just thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak and I, I thank you again for um, all the great ideas that are coming forward. Thanks again. Is there anyone else that has anything that hasn't been said already? Um, it looks like we have two right in front, Mr. Collins, and then one in the back. Uh, right over here. Hi, I'm Erica Franks from 40 Thayer Street. And I won't repeat all the things that was going in my mind because they've been said already. But one thing I would encourage the family to do, or whoever ends up owning this property, as soon as I heard it was a wonderful habitat in a marshland, time to put it into conserve some kind of protected status to preserve it as a green space for the town forever. Thank you. There was a comment right behind. Emily Wolf Cool for Mountain Road. Um, it sounds as if there has been quite a bit of challenge with communication here, and that is certainly regrettable. 
we all know the adage of location, location, location. And as I look at the map and as I hear some of the other interesting suggestions, this location and this opportunity seems really to be one that should be very seriously considered. And I hope that it is something that can come to pass. Thank you. Uh, in the very back, Mr. Collins, there's just one more up front there as well. someone's property without their willingness to give it up. But the perspective I'm speaking of is one because there's not always necessarily a bus ride back, as you know, actually there's not. And so you're relying sometimes on other other students to drive your your players over there and so there's this safety factor with not having an adjacent field same thing with ultimate frisbee there are no buses so you rely again on coaches driving your kids hearing that kids were in the back of pickups a little bit of a safety factor once again an adjacent field would be amazing and again i don't want to take someone's property it sounds like there is some property that is actually purchasable if that's word and if that's the case, maybe we just talk about fields for now, as I really feel this is really a safety issue. And again, I think that it sounds like we might be able to get some fields in without necessarily that, that what are we calling it, a shell of some sort for entertainment purposes. Maybe that goes somewhere else. Um, but I really, I think that's one factor that hasn't been brought up today is the safety factor. Thank you. Hi, Lori Busada, um, 193 North Main Street. I am uh, just thinking that this needs more study. I um, know that my kids played at Channing Beat for many years, and if that land is at all available somehow, I would like to look into that because that land is a field now. I cannot support cutting down this amount of trees in a wooded area, I think uh, I would like to see it being put into a conservation restriction. I think um, our students would benefit from a piece of woodlands where they can study um, in the current status of the world right now uh, more than the town would benefit from a band shell. Um, Mr. St. Peter, you have a mic so we can, we can get that live. Uh, Bruce St. Peter's, 19B Snowberry Circle. Um, Chief Petrarch is, has two young kids, and uh, he's, he's looking at the best interests of the town. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Mark died before negotiations were done, but, and there's been a, very, a lot of good uh, um, alternatives put out here tonight, but a couple things I do want to keep in mind is uh, most of those um, uh, areas that you're talking about would not be eligible for for any kind of grants that uh, Mr. Petrarch talked about you know, being on a bus route and or 100 parking spaces. So first thing you'd be doing is uh, uh, costing the town at least, uh, you know, up to $500,000 more to do the same spot if you, if you could find it on top of the uh, cost of the uh, um, land itself. And as well as uh, and there again, I can sympathize with the family, uh, not lose their property, but the property is not going to end up being the standard house lot. The standard house lot still is going to be a little over two acres, even if the town does uh, uh, utilize the back seven and a half acres for uh, recreation. So there's still a pretty good sized parcel left with the house lot. Thank you, sir. In the back. Mr. Collins, there's one over on the right as well. Oh, uh, my right, I'm sorry. Missy Novak, 87 Sugarloaf Street. Can I just ask for some clarification as to what a yes vote gets, uh, what you're voting for as opposed to, it sounds like we're, we've got a lot of different ideas about where we could have recreational places. We're not voting on all the different places we could have parks. Uh, it sounds like we're voting to 
to set aside some money for a purchase that's already been made. And I don't know if that also means that in that decision, we also vote to in a moment, but um, there is a separate vote this evening on whether the town We're going to take up that discussion fairly shortly. This motion that's before you is capital side, uh, and they're, they're using an application and asking you to approve it for funds that would be used for to purchase by eminent domain and also to proceed with the project as a whole as it's been described in the, the presentation. So just for clarification, we could vote to secure the funds and later talk about whether or not we're okay with those funds being used for eminent domain. I'm going to just kind of explain what's going to happen because it becomes fairly important in a second. Uh, town Council has pointed out that the eminent domain vote actually has to precede the vote that we're debating right now. So in a moment, we're going to table what we've all been talking about and move to the eminent domain vote on this parcel. So if the town were to vote uh, affirmatively with, by a two-thirds majority to take the eminent domain route with this parcel or to enter into a purchase and sale, whatever, um, then we will come back to this article and address it. If the town votes to not approve the eminent domain taking, there may be a need to amend this motion. I, I leave that up to the proponents, but they may have to remove this parcel and proceed solely with the Prevere parcel, which I understand there's a contract for. So I know that's confusing, but does that kind of make sense? Okay. So with that, I think we'll stop debate here, and there will be a motion. I move to table the motion until after Article 17. So there can be no debate on a motion to table. All we're basically doing is taking everything we've been talking about and putting it on hold for a moment. Uh, and we're going to now proceed out of order, which I have the authority to do as moderator, to Article 17 in your handout. And just we'll have that motion in a moment, but essentially to summarize it, it is the authorization by the town for the town to proceed through a purchase and sale or eminent domain to, uh, on the Marks parcel. So with that, uh, if someone could make a motion, I'm not sure who that is, on Article 17. Yeah. Dave. Mr. Wolfram. Yeah. I move the town vote to authorize the selectman to purchase, acquire, or take by eminent domain the parcel of land identified as approximately 7.45 acres, plus or minus, identified in the assessor's records as map 158, lot 23, and owned by Charles Mark and to raise and appropriate by transfer, borrowing, or otherwise, the amount of $36,000 to fund said acquisition. Said acquisition of land having been determined to be necessary for the health and welfare for the inhabitants of Deerfield to be used for general recreational purposes to be under the care, custody, and control of the selectmen. We can hold the second on that. We actually didn't take a vote on the motion to table. So all those in favor of tabling the earlier discussion Show by a raise of hands. Opposed? That motion carries by two-thirds. A second on Mr. Wolfram's motion. Mr. Wolfram, do you wish to summarize it all? Yeah, the, um, the actual intent of the Board of Selectmen is to purchase this property. It's not to take it by eminent domain. Uh, what we want to do is have the authority to negotiate with the family uh, uh, to purchase this property. Or, or parts of that property that would augment the Prevere property that we're also looking at, which is just north of this property. Um, it's um, the amount of thirty-six thousand dollars is what the um, the appraised value is for, uh, and that's why we're asking for the thirty-six thousand to to have that as a negotiating tool. Uh, Ms. Rathbone, would you like to speak to start the discussion? Uh, right here, the front. Thank you. Weeks after you, you don't get to say anything. So you have to anticipate it all, and that's difficult. Um, eminent domain, what can I say? I've talked to a number of land use attorneys since Friday, if you can imagine that. I've had a headache for three days trying to 
pin down what could or couldn't happen. Um, they say in Western Massachusetts it's rarely used. It's used more often in Boston. Um, I, I can't, I, I can't, I feel uncomfortable addressing the issue of my perspective on you choosing to enter into negotiations with us over the sale of the land. I don't want to sell the land. You could give me a million dollars for it. I don't want to sell the land. You could give me two million. You could give me five million. I don't want to sell my father's and mother's land. I can tell you that. We are one of three 10-acre parcels. The Barretts across the street to the right is 11, and the Descaviches, who I spoke to today and who said they supported us completely, have about eight. So there are not many of these left. They are their own kind of treasure. And if you just look at it behind you, it's so beautiful. There was a fawn the other, I'd never seen a fawn, and I'd never seen a fawn this small on that land before. And as I was eating breakfast at seven o'clock, there was the fawn. I, I can't even imagine entering into negotiations. And I want to clarify something. If my father agreed to anything in his two weeks before he died, when he was not in his right mind, he would have been talking about the two acres by the railroad tracks. He would never have said, go ahead and put a band shell with my name on it in my backyard. Never in a million years. He just didn't believe in that kind of thing. I guess he made a mistake in not getting together with the uh, land trust people and the environmentalists, even declaring it a tree farm, which has been suggested to me. Um, I come from many years in California. I know about eminent domain there. It's rough what you do to people when you do eminent domain. They try not to. They really try not to. I just am not hearing. I, I'm not hearing enough of a community justification to move me to change my mind about that land. I get that Chief Pachorek remembers his childhood fondly and wants to replicate that. I'm completely sympathetic with that. But at the price of me, he keeps dismissing us as five to ten people who will be unhappy. From what I'm hearing, a lot of people would be unhappy with the idea of clobbering us with eminent domain to take the property. You know, I could see if it was derelict. I could see... If it, was, if it was somehow poorly used, but it's beautiful. An eminent domain should not take beauty in such a capricious way. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? In the front. Next. Hi, Gail Dupree again, next door to Judith. Um, as far as her father's um, state of mind, he late. Really, truly believe that he did not. And he seemed very set in his ways, very set in his ways. When you would speak to him, I don't think he understood what I was saying to him, especially with his hard of hearing. So, like I said, um, lots of wildlife back there, tons of deer. We sit there and watch them all the time. We see hoof prints in our yard coming in and out, and not just deer. There's foxes. There's all kinds of stuff. So, 
taking her property, Charles's property, it, it's absolutely wrong. So that's all I have to say. And thank you for everyone helping out this situation tonight. Thank you. In the middle there? Jennifer Remillard, Conway Street. My question is, is it feasible for this project to go through if you do it only with the land that is eligible to be purchased? You can get rid of the half shell or band shell and some of the soccer fields and reduce it to one parcel. Is that an option? Mr. McDaniel, can you address that or? That, that's our, you know, one way or the other, we need, we need fields. Um, it's an ideal uh, piece of property right between what we're putting in and, and what we need. Um, you know, we'd have to have access down the road instead of, um, instead of joining all of this, this property together. But yes, one way or the other, we're, we're still moving forward with the project. Yeah, it's better than a concrete plant, for sure. Any other a question or a comment over there? Just to clarify, oh, Erica Ross, um, 22 Greener Crossing. Thank Just you. to clarify, we're going to vote on Article 17 to purchase or eminent domain this process, this property, which has been very clearly stated is not for sale at this time by the, these children of this man who just died. So once we vote for that, we go back to the other one, and it sounds like we can go ahead with a park that has some. will serve the purpose of safety, as Michelle said, for our children, and that's what we're looking at. Is that, does yes. that make sense, what it, I just said? That, yes. That's oh, correct. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this article? Eve Brown, wait, 15 Keats Road. My question is, could this motion be amended to strike any mention of eminent domain? Then if you want to, we can approve for you to go ahead and enter negotiations if the family chooses to sell. But that eminent domain is not on the table. Is it possible to make that amendment? Any motion can be amended if it's proposed by, by someone in the audience. Well, then I would like to propose a friendly amendment. But no friendly amendment. We're going to need a written a motion to amend. So um, we can get you a pad and paper. I mean, would vote for that I'm, I don't want to waste our time no, we, that, we can't ask that <laughs> um, I don't want to waste time but I, I understand I think we already have <laughs> um, so if you want to come forward we'll get you a pen and I've got a pad here okay. yeah Trevor Mr. McDaniel will make the motion to amend to save you All set. Seems to be a little fuzzy word. If we just say, I move the town vote to authorize the select board to purchase the parcel of land identified as. So we strike that whole thing. Is that what you've done, Trevor? I have a motion to amend that has been presented by Mr. McDaniel, and it states as follows. So the article would read, to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to purchase, acquire, uh, purchase or acquire, that's not how it's written, but purchase or acquire the parcel of land identified as approximately 7.45 acres plus or minus, identified in the assessor's records, and then continues as written. That's the motion that has been presented to amend. Is there a second on that motion? Thank you. Is there any discussion on that? Uh, there's been a motion to call the vote, so we need a second on the motion to call the vote. The call the, call the vote would need to pass by a two-thirds majority, which would immediately call the need to vote. The proponent of the motion would then have seven minutes, should they wish to exercise it. All those in favor of the motion to call the vote? Opposed? That motion carries. We now are uh, proceeding on the motion as amended 
that's been called to vote. So a motion to amend to strike the word eminent domain. All those in favor of that motion. All those opposed. That motion carries by two thirds. So now we are back to the motion as amended. Uh, so now, now the word eminent domain has been struck from the motion. So we're now voting on that motion. Is there any further discussion on the motion with the word eminent domain removed? Right here. One moment. Kathy Bertinison, um, 36 North Hillside Road. Um, I just have a question. What does acquire mean? That's not purchasing. What? So you could acquire by eminent domain. I, I, yeah. Uh, there's a difference. I'm going to let town council speak okay. to that, if you would. It's better to hear from her. So the the purchaser acquires general language. You must have in the motion specifically to take by eminent domain if the board of selectmen are going to be authorized to do that. So with that omitted, they must must reach an agreement in order to purchase the property. Does that satisfy your concern? Thank you. There was a question over here or a comment. My name is Greg Franceschi. I live at 80 North Main Street. And I, uh, I don't understand why we're entertaining this option. It seems absurd to me. The family has made it extremely clear that they're not interested in selling the parcel. So why would we allocate money to discuss the possibility of negotiating, which seems to me to be completely unnecessary and unfair pressure that would continue to be pushed on these two people. They don't want to sell the land. Why are we even talking about it? I don't understand this motion, and, and I don't think we should even entertain voting for it. Uh, in the back, and then you next, Mr. Decker. Butler, One Hillside, am I allowed to make a motion to amend that amendment to strike the word acquire? Because acquire can still be used to take something from her that she's not willing to sell. She's made very clear, this entire family has made very clear, they are not willing to enter into negotiations, so why are we even continuing with this? Unfortunately, we cannot make that motion. Mr. Decker? Mr. Moderator, uh, I would like to point out the fact that having been on the regional school committee for upwards of 12 years recently and in, in back in the 80s, we tried to buy that property before Mr. Mark acquired it from the Jewett estate, our Jewett family, and couldn't get the votes at Frontier to buy it. And uh, I've regretted it ever since, but we couldn't get the votes. Now, this motion that's being offered here today might leave the possibility that maybe access could be gained to the back section next to the railroad so that you could get from one parcel to the other parcel and to Frontier. But it, it's not the ideal setup that Mr. Pachurik has proposed, but it might be a way of getting some access to that property so that the kids didn't have to go out onto the street to get there and uh, let the negotiations go where it does. have to get a willing buyer and a willing seller. Thank you. Ms. Rathbone, if you'd like to speak briefly. I would just like to say that I found it very upsetting when um, Chief asked me in um, February, end of February. Uh, no, no, not end of February. When he asked me March uh, uh, 12th, if he could speak with me and my father about this. It was very upsetting. He knew the condition my father was in. He was well aware of it. And we, we are in mourning for our father. Do we want to negotiate over what his dream was? Is that really what everybody wants? I, I said, I'm, 
I'm open to finding a solution for the soccer field, but you, I, I just can't understand why we're being asked to negotiate something when my father has just died. I just ask all of you to think about what state of mind you were in when one of your immediate family just died. Chief came to me after dad died. I was so offended. Vera talked to him instead of me. She said, we are in mourning. Our family life was a complicated one. Those of you in town who knew my father know why that was. So could we please mourn our father and then get to a place where we can be rational again and not emotional, where we can honor his legacy, not with a name on a band shell in our backyard. I'm sorry, that won't happen if I have my way. But I am open to finding a solution. I think the planning process for this went off the rails. If father had known that people were talking about taking his land by eminent domain for a year, he would have been there even in his state of weakened health to speak about what he felt, I guarantee you. So could you please just give us time and we will figure it out. We are just new to this situation, very new, very new. I have walked the railroad tracks to view the back of the property. I'm getting a feeling for the whole thing. I need to have time. My sister needs time. I appreciate the fact that you are not supporting eminent domain. I appreciate it more than you could possibly imagine. But we need time. We need time. Give us time to just mourn our... We are not. Thank you, Ms. Rathbone. Thank you. Mr. Mr. McDaniel. Is there any other comments or questions? At this point, we're going to call the vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion as amended? I'm going to need to count. So, uh, does somebody not understand the motion? Or Right now, I'll read the motion to you to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to purchase or acquire the parcel of land identified as approximately 7.45 acres, identified in the assessor's record as map 158, lot 23, and owned by Charles Mark, and to raise and appropriate by transfer, borrowing, or otherwise, the amount of $36,000 to fund said acquisition, said acquisition of land having been determined to be necessary for the health and welfare of the inhabitants of Deerfield, to be used for general recreational purposes, to be under the care, custody, and control of the select board, or take any action relative thereto. All those in favor of the motion. All those opposed? I want to write down the number. Give me one moment. All those opposed? You can put down your hands. Thank you. Uh, 
The motion does not carry. Is there a motion to pick up the article from the table that we were previously discussing on CPC? So moved. Second. All those in favor of moving back to the article regarding the CPC funding? Opposed? That motion carries. So essentially we're back on Article C of the, uh, I'm sorry, Portion C of Article 13. Is there a motion to amend that article or motion? Yes. Mr. McDaniel. I move to amend paragraph C by removing reference to 7.45 plus or minus acres shown on map 158, lot 23. Is there a second? So Mr. McDaniel is essentially removing the reference to the mark parcel which means you'd be looking and, or considering the language relative to the Prevere parcel. Um, is there any questions or discussions on that? So again, we're not passing the article, we're just passing the article to amend it. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. On the underlying motion, if uh, I can read it back to you if there's any question. So we, essentially, as I summarize, you're just voting for the Prevere parcel, essentially, uh, to be uh, used with the CPC funds. All those in favor of that? Opposed? Motion carries by two thirds. Ms. Shores Ness. Transfer $30,000, 10% of the Community Preservation Fund 2021 estimated revenues to the reserve for community housing as required by General Law Chapter 44B. So there, uh, under the Community Preservation Act, there's a certain percentage of funds from each category that need to be allocated if they're not otherwise spent, and that's what this motion does. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Shores Ness. Appropriate 15,005% from the Community Preservation Fund 2021 estimated revenues for Community Preservation Committee administrative expenses. Second. Uh, again, this, the Community Preservation uh, article allows 5% of the annual revenue to be uh, utilized for administrative expenses and, that's, uh, expenses, and that's what this does. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Shores Ness. Transfer 153516 the balance of the Community Preservation Fund 2021 estimated revenues to the Community Preservation Budgeted Reserve. Second. Second. Uh, just, again, just, these are the funds that were not allocated for any other projects uh, this year, so they'll be put into the annual, uh, into the budgeted reserve. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 14, Mr. Uh, Wolfram. Get there. <laughs> okay. Uh, I move the town change the use of the top three feet of a landfill located off of Lee Road, South Deerfield, from landfill purposes to general municipal purposes and authorize the select board to enter into a lease agreement for up to 25 years for the reuse of the former landfill off of Lee Road for the purpose of installing and operating a solar photovoltaic facility on terms and conditions which the board determines are in the best interest of the town and further enter into the power purchase agreement to, for periods of up to 25 years for the purchase of the solar energy generated by the the facility and further in accordance with general law chapter 59 section 39 h authorize the select board and the board of assessors to negotiate and enter into a tax agreement for payment of personal and real property taxes on the solar f facility for a period of up to 25 years is there a second mr wolfram if you can briefly summarize you know, uh, the Energy Commission Committee has been working diligently on securing a uh, uh, company to install solar panels onto the uh, landfill area, and uh, which would uh, bring a significant amount of revenue into the town. 
uh, for the rental uh, of the property and the uh, personal property tax. Any questions? Comments? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Article 15. I move the town in accordance with General Laws Chapter 59, Section 38H, authorize the select board to enter into a tax agreement with Old Frontier Solar th uh, 3, or yeah, 3 LLC, or its affiliate or assignee for a period of up to 25 years for the payment of per personal property taxes and to approve said agreement under which Old Frontier Solar 3 LLC will pay the town a sum of money per year relative to the proposed construction and operation of a large-scale ground-mounted solar, solar photovoltaic installation to be constructed on a 10-acre plus or minus parcel of land located at east of Setright Road, parcels 142-20 and 142-22 with an expected nameplate capacity and approximately 2.5 uh, Two seven two um, megawatts DC. Uh, said tax agreement is on file in the town off uh, town clerk's office, and further allow the select board to negotiate any amendments necessary to said tax agreement to reflect any changes in the size of the photo, uh, solar photovoltaic installation, so long as the payments reflected in the tax agreement rise commensurately. Mr. McDaniel, so the old uh, solar, uh, the old Frontier Solar Three project has gone through a detailed review of both the Board of Assessors and Select Board. Agreed upon annual payments to the town will be twenty-seven thousand one hundred and one dollars per year for twenty years, for the total of five hundred and fifty-two thousand twenty dollars. This amount was calculated based on the statutory guidelines and the uh, predicted cost and revenues of the project. This structured tax agreement between the town of the town and Old Frontier Solar Three demonstrates a, a modeled, um, predictable cash flow, which helps with the project financing, and the town can reliably count on income without having to provide services, as solar arrays do not require servicing by the town. The pilot does not serve as a discount or a tax break. It is a structured payment schedule to adjust. For the predicted tax increases as part of the contractual agreement, um, in addition to the pilot, the project will uh, will also pay annual uh, annually South Deerfield uh, water and fire taxes, and will pay rollback taxes on the property related to its Chapter 61A designation. Thank you. you. Any any questions or comments? All those in favor. Opposed? The motion carries. Article 16. Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town vote to authorize the select board to purchase, acquire, or take by eminent domain the parcel of land identified as approximately 8.5 acres plus or minus identified in the assessor's record as map 151, lot 1, and owned by Joyce Prevere by the deed recorded in the Franklin County Registry of Deeds, book 2635, page uh, 326 and to raise and appropriate by transfer or borrowing or otherwise the amount of 272,000 to fund said acquisition said acquisition of land having been determined to be necessary for the health welfare of the inhabitants of Deerfield to be used for general recreation purposes to be under the care custody and control of the select board thank you, Sir, thank you. any comments or questions yes in the back We can just wait for the microphone. Eve Brown, wait, 15 Keats Road. What's with the eminent domain? Can I suggest we amend this to delete eminent domain? I understand this has already been negotiated and it's fine, but why do we keep threatening to take people's land? It makes no sense. I would like us to amend this. Thank you. Mr. McDaniel, are you willing to make that amendment or do you want to make Can it? I address it? Yes, I'd like our council to address this. So, 
in this one, there's a purchase and sale agreement. One of the other things about eminent domain um, is that if there is a title problem in the, in the sale process and the board exercises its right to use eminent domain, it clears the title for the town. And in this instance, it would be a friendly eminent domain because we have already reached an agreement with the buyer, I mean, excuse me, with the seller. So that's what the tool is there for, and that's why it's left in there in this particular instance. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor of the motion as presented. Opposed? The motion carries by two-thirds. Article 17 has been addressed. Article 18, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town approve the local incentive application of Pilot Precision Products, LLC, High Partners LLC and their affiliates and vote to authorize the select board to submit to the Massachusetts Office of Business Development an application designating the property located at 15 Merrigan Way, South Deerfield, Mass., portions of which are shown on Assessor's Map 75, Parcel 55, as an economic opportunity area pursuant to the provisions of General Laws Chapter 23A and further to authorize the select board to enter into a tax increment financing agreement and tax increment financing plan with Pilot Precision uh, Products, LLC, and affiliates, pursuant to the provisions of General Laws Chapter uh, 40, Section 59, in connection with the development of said property, and to authorize the select board to take such action as necessary to obtain approval of the local incentive application and to and to implement the tax increment financing agreement and tax increment financing plan. Second. Thank you. So, um, so this is a this is a uh, they call them a TIF, and this is uh, we're we're very excited to have Pilot here. Um, they, um, as everybody knows, this is next to the town highway garage over the last year or so. Um, our select board and, and our previous select board member um, negotiated to have um, Pilot Precision come to Deerfield and put in, uh, you know, put in a brand new building with brand new state-of-the-art manufacturing along with um, bringing jobs here from two other, two other uh, businesses. They kind of combined and, and, and built here with the plans to expand in the future. And so a lot of times when businesses come to a community, um, they look for a tax break for a certain number of years. And, uh, and, and a lot of times we do this in that when, when a community gives a tax break for, for a short amount of time, it, it uh, triggers other tax breaks that the company gets through, um, through the state. And so um, the idea is to run this, uh, this TIP program for seven years. Um, I think the total, I think there is a chart I don't have in front of me. I think it was around 56,000 or something total over the, over the seven years um, that we have. Oh, thank you. Uh, so a total of $54,466.18 uh, starting in 2021 and ending in uh, 2027. It, it uh, goes to 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and 20. Um, for again, totaling $54,000 in a tax break um, to see manufacturing here in Deerfield, here in Massachusetts, here in the United States. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, a, a couple of moderator motions. I move to see if the town will vote any instructions to its officers, boards, committees, or commissioners. Mr. Russo? Uh, actually, if I can have a second. Thank you, Mr. Russo. That would be great if you want to read it while you're... Mr. Russo has presented a, a motion that, uh, I'm sorry, instruction that states, I request that the select board, 
Sorry. I requested the select board appoint committee to explore the feasibility of purchasing the former Channing L. Beat building and grounds to address multiple town needs. These needs may include town hall replacement, senior center replacement, library replacement, senior housing, walking trails, athletic fields, police use, ability for town to rent unused space to generate income. I would ask that this committee be charged to investigate and return its finding, findings as quickly as possible to allow the select board to determine if it's in our best interest before the property is sold to another buyer. So again, this is the opportunity in the meeting if there's any non-binding matter, so we've taken that into the record. We thank you. Any other motions or requests? Okay, and with that, uh, before I do adjourn, I just want to thank FCAT and I want to thank Matt Carlson, uh, who did an incredible job setting up tonight. The mic work and the speaker has been great as well. And thank you, Officer Sokolowski, for really coordinating the fine details here today. So, With that, I move that the meeting adjourn to meet in the polls at the meeting room at the town offices at 8 Conway Street in the village of South Deerfield on Monday, June 8, 2020 at 10 a.m. for the purpose of elections and at the closure of the polls dissolve. Is there a second? And with that, the meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you, everybody.